that is just something that I have not heard what they will commit to. And that's concerning to me, okay? Because this conditional use permit, if it's vague, it gives them too much liberty, okay, to do what they want. I mean, we almost had a substation go through with no mitigating factors last, last, last month. So I think we just need to follow the law. Um, I think the vegetation, the berm, oh, by the way, the berm is better than the um, concrete thing. Uh, the more coverage, green wall, if you will, and I think that mimics or near the other objection it was filed to. Um, but that's that's great. Does, do any of you have any questions for me that um, from what I said last month and, and, and today, I, I really do come here in good faith. I know this is a difficult decision. No one wants it here, but I, I get it. You know, they, they bought the land, they can have a substation, but we have the power, or you have the power, to actually protect this neighborhood. And that's what I really want to do. Thank you. Anybody have any questions? Larry Gurch, I'm a property owner, a property owner. To give you a perspective, the land in many ways, like the river controls, is 0.8 acres, or our 0.8 miles. Same thing for Hoover City. I'm probably closer to a mile that's going to go down my property line. So I'm, I'm significantly afflicted, and this law section, the county planning commission, the board, that needs to help me out and address my concerns. I presented a list of questions back in December. None of those questions have been addressed by this commission. They haven't been addressed by the applicant. I presented them when, they, when I talked in the hearing. They talked about EMFs, the health. They talked about the, the buzz, whether there's going to be noise. If you notice Jason's question, well, there's no noise in our property line. Okay, what? Well, nobody's asked the question, well, is there noise on the, the poles? Is there noise on these other things? These questions need to be addressed by this commission before I'll be not present you another copy if you need to, I'll go to you. I've got plenty of copies because none of those were addressed and I presented them at the December 14th meeting. I don't know if this meeting tonight is, there would be a lot of people here that I think if this was publicly noticed, so I don't know if even opened it up for, for public notice is now uh, you know, sufficient. One of the questions we were asked last time is what about alternative routes? Okay, and if I can point, perhaps, is there a way to point? Okay, if you look at where the green line is up here on the map, and I go up to the road right above it, okay, right there. If you go up to the road to the west, then you go directly to the west of this proposed route, you can see the very top corner there. There's already a, a full line going up that road. There's 18, or, there's 18 poles on that road. It's basically the same length as what you're going to go up through the green line. So the question is, why don't they go up that road where they already have access because you've got significant wetland problems, other problems in where the green line is. So the question, you can already go up established road and, and, and join into Highway 40 out by where the Wasatch back is or where it used to be called the other end. So when you start talking about out front of your brown, why hasn't that been considered? And that was one of the questions. And I've never seen or heard either applicant present any information about that alternative route. The, the fundamental question I want to bring up about, if you don't, you know, in your motion, back in December, there was a, the, to make this application, as I appreciate it, the applicants needed to have the easements to get approval. They didn't have them, and so we get into this discussion about the chicken and the egg. Well, which, you know, they don't want to go get the easements until they have the approval, and they're asking for additional approval. They don't have the same rights in obtaining those easements under the state law, and I'll call it the national law, effectively, eminent domain, that they do on, on the, if they have to get those easements up front and come in with their application. What they want you to do is prove this application and that gives them state law, 
uh, eminent domain rights. And so what I'm asking is one of those mitigating conditions in the conditional use if you approve it, that they have the same rights that they would have if they went out and got the easements before so that they don't handicap the landowners when they come to try and get the easements because all they, uh, basically a landowner, they can say, take it or leave it, take me to court if you don't like what I'm offering you to the easement. Let me make sure I understand what you're saying. You're saying that they have more eminent domain rights if they uh, know the route of the poles. If you approve the project. So how does that? Impact? It's like, like there... before they had the the, the, the the application needed to have the easements in hand for you to come in to approve it. They didn't have eminent domain rights under that the, under the, those easements to, to, to obtain those easements at that time. Now, if you give them condition, you know, if you give them approval, now they have eminent domain rights. But isn't that always the case? So you're not going to have eminent domain rights until you know you need to build a park somewhere. Right. right. I what, I, what I'm suggesting to you, if I could, is that they can't have increased eminent domain rights. Where is if they had to come and negotiate with me today on my easement, I might say, hey, I'll give you the easement if you put it underground. I mean, we had a big debate about this, of going underground versus above ground, and the costs of going underground. I can offer that in the, in the, in the, in the, in the discussion today. If you approve it without putting some limit on that, then they can come in and say, I'm doing least cost, take it or leave it. And if you don't like me going overhead, I can take it, you can take me to court. I'm pretty sure the law provides that they have to provide you to pay you market value. That's I, not I the point. I'm not sure. I know your point. I understand your point that, that if they get some sort of official whatever, conditional use from the county, it somehow elevates their rights on a particular path. I'm just not sure, and I, John, I don't know if you know, I don't think anything that this planning commission does can enhance or impair the rights of eminent domain or or not. So I don't think we impact that. I think the, the rules are the rules, whether they have a conditional use permit or not. I don't Okay, now I, and I guess what I'm but I'm willing to say I don't know for sure. Do you know? I haven't researched that. I don't think we can okay. change that or give them I, I, all I'm asking you is to say that they would not have enhanced, you know I don't think we can comment one way or the other trying to impact I think the law defines those rights and I think County Planning Commission can't well, and should be with that. Well, the reason I would say that, that I would debate that with you, and, and we got two attorneys here, so forgive me for practicing law here without a license. But, well, I'm not an expert at that. But, but, but the point is, is if they made the application to get it approved, as they started out in December of 17, they needed to have the easements in hand to get approval. Okay? We, we debated it. That was part of the application, part of the condition. We've since modified it to a conditional use, and now they say, I, I, want, I want to know, I want to have approval of the project so I can go out and obtain the easements. I think that they have enhanced easement acquisition rights by, by having approval versus getting them before and coming to the planning commission and saying, here's the route we'd like to follow. We've negotiated with all the landowners and they've all given us easements. That, that certainly changed the negotiating abilities, you know, from my perspective. So, thank you for your time. I have a question for John. Can you discuss something earlier? Yes. What we do get the next kind of 60 days ago. Yeah, I can discuss that. So, so everybody's kind of aware of what we're trying to do. The applicant hasn't threatened to do this, and, and I, I appreciate that. Um, but under state law, um, 60 days after they apply, if the county hasn't approved the application, they can they can go before the utility facility board which is a, a kind of a state composed entity and get the approval through them 
in this case, I, I, and we had our first public hearing on this in December of 2017. I, I don't think that we can consider this, that the application that we have now, that, that they could approve, they could say that that's what's being approved because they've changed the application over time. This is often the case with a complex application like this. But I think that they could say when they get us the application that we're looking at and asking for approval, if, if we want 60 days from, from that being given to us, they, they do have the option of going to the state. That we would get a worse outcome out of that than we would if it's approved through this body. So it, it's something to consider. So from what you're saying is that what we're trying to do as a planning commission is to try to work with you, like power and put it in as proper and nice facility as possible. Right. So they could rent it down our throats. We, 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 could, we could fight it, and, and we would put up a good fight if they tried to ram it down our throats. But I, at, at the end of the day, I can pretty much guarantee we're going to get a better outcome out of this body than if they go through that route, if that makes sense. Yeah. Let me just address some of the things that perhaps we've been accused of. We have noticed this. The original notice, we didn't have the actual address, so we maybe didn't have that indicated. Um, so we've done our, our best to be legally uh, in compliance. Uh, I remind people when they do referendums and they take rights of ownership away, you know, a long time ago we fought battles to save the bundle of rights that homeowners have to do with what they want to with their properties. Uh, as far as easements go, there are, they are trying to use current easements as best they can. We have driven on several tours to various areas that outline different locations. And this one uh, seems to be the best for everybody related to the electrical world trying to mitigate as many people as it, as it has been uh, uh, studied. Uh, so we try to do a lot of remedies. We're not going to be able to do every remedy. Uh, there may be a, an opportunity, and I may be asking for lighting power, can, can your items be moved north or south in that area, or is that the only area you can put those? pieces of equipment and, and with that being said we're are we that. talking about the substation yeah uh yeah i mean i alluded the you can we don't have an issue sliding back to the east we just want to make sure that we're giving the the proposed bypass the room they need on that on that east side I think so that of the property um, I think that we can definitely, you know, go a little bit further north. You know, I, the only thing we're trying to do is, you know, on board instruction from me is try to, you know, um, mitigate some of the costs to our ratepayers on the purchase of this property by possibly at one day having an asset that we can sell to recoup. So if you did move it, that's going to be a bigger expense. Is that what you're saying? Uh, no, we'll move it. I have no issue moving it a little north bit further south. to the north, okay. you know, uh, and also to the east, to the to the minimum that we can, and still give room for that bypass road. Right. Any other comments? <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. My name is Herb Burnett. My wife Kim and I live on 650 South. There's, uh, you know, we've listened over quite a course of time. Of course, the applicant has put a lot of effort into this. He was the commission as well. So we've heard a lot of concerns. We have a lot of questions and concerns. Some of those, of course, for the commission and some to the applicant. I don't know if you accept me asking you questions or if I have something to ask. Is uh, you know what we hear the information about uh, 
okay, at property line, there's no sound, smell, <coughs> so no impact at all at property line. So if I step inside the property line, is there, are those some of those circumstances imminent? You know, what about outside the property line? If there are any of the applicants who have ever walked under a power line and not hear anything, I think everybody, you know, I'm hard of hearing, and I can still hear it sometimes, the buzz of power lines. So for them to say there's no impact, they've been on part of their application, all the stipulations, no impact, no burden, nothing noticeable, no, it doesn't, doesn't impact the public, no financial burden. Um, if you, if they have an asset that they think at some point they want to sell, would any of the applicants want to move into that house that they're going to put the substation next to? If they do, they don't, certainly don't want to move the substation further north. Do any of the applicants have 138 feet up over, the, over their house? <laughs> what, are, what are the circumstances of their particular needs? And I realize, with growth in, the, in this county, this city, with growth, there has to be growth. Power lines, hospitals, impact of everything. We all accept that. There is proof. But to say, to come in front of the commission and say, there is no impact, there is no financial burden, nothing is noticed. You don't see, smell, hear anything at the property line. I think that's, uh, I think that is, that evidence is, is misdirected. I don't think they can actually say that. As an applicant, they want to minimize everything as much as possible. You know, we've, we've all made applications for something. So they do want to, they do want to minimize the concerns. And that's acceptable to a point. You know, let's realize you are going to hear about it. You're going to hear some, there is going to be an impact. It's pretty hard to bury or to hide to say there won't, you know, total mitigation. It's pretty hard to hide a 35 foot structure with a five foot berm and some trees on it. And I accept that. You're not trying to hide a substation. But to try to say that we are going to hide it, you know, that's, uh, that's misinformation. So, and they hope not to see metal structures at certain points, but there's nothing if they get a, a uh, get approval. Well, we had to put a metal structure. That's okay. But to say we hope not to, and then think, well, we just have to do it. Number of miles, number of lines of distribution, and all the things, you know, I think you heard, uh, and one commissioner asked me, uh, you know, impact what are the plans with the house, with that uh, residence? If they do have plans of, you know, at some point selling it, I would bet there are none of the applicants or their families are going to buy it. So, you know, to minimize it, yet we don't want one in our backyard. So, I just want the commission to know that there are concerns, and I know you have a job to do. We can all appreciate that. There's going to be growth, we have to accept it. But let's not hide the facts. Thank you very much. So, just from my point of view, as the chairman here, we haven't tried to hide the facts. I think the applicants have. No, and I think what they're talking about is the substation not having a lot of noise, not the lines. The lines have always, they've never talked about the lines making noise. So they've never, ever said that they would, lines sometimes hum. But they're talking about the substation. They have mitigated all kinds of things. They, I understand. It, wood poles instead of metal. They were going to be all metal throughout the whole thing, right? Now they're going to be wood. Many. You know why we use metal? No, they are strong. Yeah. But every time they make a turn, any kind of a turn, they, they put a strain that. on it, you would rather have it not fall, so you put metal. Yeah, I've built many uh, So they've done lots of mitigation. And we're doing spans. We, I think the commission is really trying to get that so we Use less poles, uh, and I think that we can do That's just my response to some of the things. We've never tried to hide anything. We've had so, so, so many things to hide this, and they haven't either. I've been to all of them. They haven't hit a thing, but sometimes people don't listen when they have something going on in their mind that they want to talk about. That's just uh, So I think that they are not to be accused of trying not to do their best. Sometimes they don't explain it the best, but other things they've been honest. Okay, I respect. Thank you. Thank you.
But I think it's important to know that everybody in this room is here in good faith. Nobody's here you trying to wreck someone else's life. Nobody's here trying to hide anything. Uh, members of the public and the applicants. Now, do I believe? I mean, of course, the applicant's going to present their position, and there's some hyperbole in there. No impact whatsoever. We understand that. We understand there are some impacts. Um, but we need to find the facts of what was really happened and see if they met their burden of proof at the same time. I want to listen intently to members of the public and presume that you're all acting in good faith and speaking the truth and want what's best for the community. I second that. Tracy Taylor again. I, I just have one more point since I was on a timer and nobody else seemed to be on a timer. Uh, we're bad at timers. <laughs> well, there's a lot less people here tonight because nobody knew there was going to be a public hearing. And the one you actually noticed back at, for June 4th, this place was packed and they didn't get to speak. So this is, you guys brought up the 60 day deadline that seems to be out there. And my point only is, um, my complaint was based on the fact that I don't think we did a proper process back at the beginning of June. So I'm thinking we buy a, few, a couple more months to start over, do this right, notice a public hearing, actually let the people speak, because nobody's here tonight to speak. Okay, That's what I'm trying to say is get an application that is actually has correct information on it. Okay. Notice the public hearing with an actual address on it. If you do it correctly, then that starts the clock, I would presume, because so far this has just been two meetings that might not be productive. Let me just say, it doesn't start the clock. As you heard our own legal counsel say, as we have these applications that are very difficult, very sometimes contentious, they get adjusted every once in a while, and that's what's happened. As I so said, it's substantially changed in the law. So whatever that means, and, it's and we have to determine that. Because of public input. We have driven around and done tons of things to try to mitigate everything that we possibly I'm talking could. about the substation being that, added. That, that is, is a substantial to change to the application. Best. And had they not done the referendum, you know what? That, that, that probably wouldn't have happened. Do you know what, Michael Smith? Um, just because you brought up the referendum twice in the last 10 minutes, yeah. it is protected in the Utah Constitution that the citizens have the right to petition their government. I understand. So, but you know, you not. need to understand that this is the right of all citizens in the state of Utah to do this. It does, but it also has its consequences, and this is one. And so this is a punishment for doing no, the petition last year? It's a consequence. I well, didn't, I didn't buy that. It's protected for this very reason, because the founding fathers of Utah wanted to make sure that the citizens had not the same power as their government. They had more power than their government. That's what the Utah Constitution that's, that's says. That's not the issue. It's, this is the consequence of that referendum. I understand that, but you brought that's it up twice. That, I didn't. And you that's, did. I did, and I'm happy I did. I just want to say that it's the consequence. It's protected in the Constitution. Thank you. Doug, if I'm not mistaken, this is, was a notice as a public hearing. Yep. This one was not a 14 day. It's 14 days, and it's notice as a public hearing. Tonight? Yes. Yeah. Who, did, who did it go to? Well, it wasn't sent. The letters were not sent to the it right doesn't it have to be sent? Uh, no, we noticed it last time with letters. So the public hearing doesn't have to be noticed no. not to, not to the landowners. Yeah. Well, maybe because they didn't get to speak last meeting. Well, and this evening, don't open that back up. I wouldn't. Well, thank you for that. Thank you for doing that. Didn't we, didn't we set this meeting up and put the substation into this meeting because we did not know the exact address last week? We discussed that. We did not have the exact address because the sale had not been completed. Right. right. And, so originally back in 20, 
17, and I was not at that meeting. Wasn't there going to be a substation out by the, the, the treatment plant? That's what's on the application. Original? Uh, no, we back then. Uh, back in back in the 2017 meeting, there was a substation uh, above the cemetery, and. Mid, up above the Midway Cemetery, and there was a substation in uh, Heber by the event center. Uh, and so part of the mitigation of this was to consolidate those two impactful substations into just one substation so that it was only impacted in one area. So that's this one. That's this one. Thank you. And I, I'd also like to say that there have been many, many hearings on this. Power boards had them. Uh, we're in Midway. We're in Heber. There's been many public hearings on this. Any, any other public comment? Seeing none, we'll close public comment. Any further comments from it? I have a couple of things that were raised in the public comment, but I just want some clarification on briefly. Um, Many of these are going to be directed to uh, John because some of them are in your territory. You sent a letter by Ms. Taylor. Um, is that something you responded to? Nope. It wasn't sent to me. It was sent to the county attorney. I have reviewed it. I'm not sure what Scott's done with it. Let me just ask you if you know, since this is you're here tonight, um, whether a specific address is required by code to be included in the application or open up. It is not. Um, we've heard some talk about uh, the application becoming, quote, substantially different. I don't know what the, that's what the language of the code actually uses. She suggested that if that's the case and the process starts over, have you looked at that at all? What was actually the um, Under for conditional uses under state code, there's actually no public hearing required. Uh, it's it's our county code that gives the requirement for public hearings for conditional use. So so we, as a county, are going above and beyond what the state code requires and, and having public hearings at all on this. Um, I'm not aware of any language that talks about that. Uh, I understand the concept, and, and I think that it's a fair concept. That's I, I think that it's fair in that it was appropriate for us to hold a public hearing with the changes to the application that happened. Uh, I don't think that it requires uh, a whole new application to be filed and then starts a whole new administrative process over. Thank you. Um, can I ask this question to the council for uh, <laughs> you were like power Adam is that you yeah that's me um, I was gonna duck and let Heidi take it <laughs> just quickly sorry there was some mention of the contract page 10 section 4 about being some issue with that do you know what that's about uh, tonight is the first I've heard of it um, without calling the contract that I can't speak to that you haven't memorized the contract. No, and that's so the contract right. actually predates me in my defense. Okay. My other question is about turning the easements over to Rockland Power. Do you have a comment on that and what rights 